In this video, I'm going to talk about my field mill project. A field mill is basically an electrostatic voltmeter that uses a rotating electromechanical shutter to read voltages at a distance. It's a non-contact voltmeter. This particular unit has uh, an LED bar graph on the back and it auto ranges over three decades of voltage. So I can measure voltages that vary over a, a, a very large range. I built this out of some coffee cans, soup cans, some bits of printed circuit board and mechanical parts from a cassette player I had laying around. So let's dig into this. When I first learned of this concept of the field mill, I thought, wow, that's very interesting. I have to make one. I've always been fascinated by uh, esoteric electronic test apparatus and this just had the right amount of weird and cool that I just had to do it. As this rotating shutter spins, it modulates the capacitance between these two sensing electrodes and the rest of the outside world. That's how it can detect voltages from a distance. Plugging the unit into 12 volts starts the motor turning. It spins about 2200 RPM in front of the sensing electrodes. The display reads in kilovolts per meter and auto ranges over three decades. Rubbing two different plastic materials together can create enormous surface voltages. One becomes positively charged while the other becomes negatively charged. As the material approaches, you can see the, the range selector light changing at the, on the bottom row. Let's open this thing up and see what's inside. Once inside here, we can see it's made up of a, a stack of different printed circuit boards. It's basically a big layer cake of stuff. The lowest board in the stack is the preamp board, which sits right next to the electrodes themselves. At the top you can see the grounding brush, which keeps the rotor at ground potential while it spins. It's made out of just a piece of pencil lead stuck between some brass shim stock. The shutter is just simply spun by a small DC motor by a little rubber drive belt. The rotation of the shutter is detected by a hull sensor which picks up the field of a small magnet which is embedded in the black pulley. As it spins around, that hull sensor creates a once per revolution pulse which is fed to the microcontroller. Let's remove the plastic cover and have a look at the display itself. It's basically made up out of a bunch of RGB LEDs soldered to a piece of circuit board. The display is multiplexed so it keeps the wiring simple. The top trace on the oscilloscope shows the synchronization pulse from the hall sensor. The trace below shows the preamp output. When a negatively charged object goes in front of the sensor, it makes troughs. But when a positively charged object comes into view, the waveform phase reverses 180 degrees and those become peaks instead of troughs. Basically, the phase is 180 degrees different for positive or negatively charged objects. The hall sensor is on an adjustable rotating sleeve, so the relative phase of the synchronization pulse and the output waveform can be adjusted. Let's take a closer look at how this device operates. In the outside world, 
we have a charged object, which in this condition here has a positive charge. So this positive charge creates an electric field. Now in the field mill, we have a sensing electrode. In between the sensing electrode and the outside world, we have a rotating shutter. This rotating shutter is grounded, very important. It rotates at about 2200 RPM between the outside world and the sensing electrode. You can look at the way this works in two ways. One is that the rotating grounded shutter intercepts the electric field lines before they make it to the sensing electrode. Or you can look at it as, as if it's a variable capacitor, where the rotating sensing electrode changes the effective capacitance of the circuit. The circuit has a fixed DC voltage, which is created by this charge object. And if you modulate the capacitance, that means the charge is going to have to change. Changing charge implies current. So the current then flows in and out of what we lovingly refer to as a transimpedance amplifier. Transimpedance amplifier converts a current into a voltage. So as the current flows in and out of the sensing electrode and into the summing junction here, it creates an AC output voltage from the op amp. So this becomes the output of our preamp. So as this thing rotates, this signal is synchronous to the rotation of this blade. And the signal is proportional to the electric field that impinges upon the sensing electrode. Now generally, we like to put a capacitor across the feedback resistor, which makes this a low pass filter. So that, that helps to eliminate some of the high frequency noise that one would pick up on the sensing electrode. So we want to get rid of the high frequency noise with this low pass configuration. All right, so now once we have this preamp concept, let's figure out how do we process the signal into a meaningful measurement. Okay, as we mentioned before, a rotating shutter has a Hall effect sensor that senses the rotation and gives us a pulse once per revolution. So this pulse is a reference. So the time that it takes is one revolution. Okay, and we use an internal counter timer to measure this period exactly. And that occurs every single revolution. When we capture a new sample, we take this time period and we divide it up into four pieces. So we divide it like this. So we take this one revolution and we effectively multiply the frequency to create a reference signal that's four times higher frequency than the one revolution signal. This timing is used to decode the waveform. We take this time interval of one revolution and we divide it by four and load it into another counter timer which creates an interrupt that occurs exactly four times per cycle. So then, as we correlate that to our waveform that's coming out of the preamp, which of course is gonna be synchronous, what we see is that we have a synchronous pulse that lines up with the peaks and the troughs of the incoming waveform. So that gives us the ability to sample the waveform at these two points. Well, actually it's four points. So each time we have an interrupt, we sample the voltage and then we take these two levels from here to here and we subtract them and that provides us 
with a value. We can also subtract these two values and also derive a value. So each time we get this interrupt, we're, we're using our A to D converter to measure the difference between the peak and the valley of the signal. And we're doing that synchronous with the revolution of the, the shutter. And that gives us the ability to reject any noise that's not exactly synchronous with this process. So this is what you call a synchronous demodulation. So we're taking an A to D reading at each one of these points. I'll circle them here. And we're comparing it to the one before it. And depending on the phase of the waveform, the subtraction results in either a positive or a negative number. So that indicates the sign of the charge that we're detecting on the sense electrode. Now, as this uh, process occurs, we take each one of these measurements and we put it through a digital filter, which is basically just a moving average filter. And that filter helps to average out the signal and further re uh, remove the noise so that we get a nice clean reading out of the process in the end of it. So that's basically how we use the once per revolution signal to decode this signal from the preamp. Let's look at the signal chain for this device. Here we have the microcontroller, we have our rotating shutter, our hall sensor which feeds pulses in to create the timing signals. We also have an external 4.096 volt uh, reference which feeds the analog to digital converter. So all of the analog to digital converter uh, readings are in the range from 0 to 4.096 volts. That's the uh, minimum and maximum range. We have our sense electrode, our preamp, and two gain stages. That gives us the ability to tap off of the, the signal chain at three places. Each one of these signals would be 10 times greater than the next. So for a given signal here, this one will be 10 times larger and this one will be 10 times larger. Now, clearly when we're measuring a large signal, we'll use the low range, which has the, the least amount of amplification. And at that point, the high range is going to be saturated. It's going to be basically going all the way to the rail. So this whole signal chain has the DC nominal level centered around half of this voltage. So around two volts is what, what the signal rides on. So we try to keep the signal obviously centered between the rails or, or the 4.096 reference voltage so it's valid. So what we do then in software is we take readings from these various uh, A to D inputs and we select the one that's most appropriate. Obviously, if an input is saturating, we need to bump down to the next lower range. And if a reading is too close to zero, we bump up to the next range. So the auto ranging circuitry basically just selects which one of these A to D inputs we want to use for the current conversion. And whenever we switch, we reset our averaging algorithm in the CPU to use the voltage that is now currently sampled at the A to D input. The main thing I use this for now is, is playing with different materials to sort of learn their electrostatic properties, test out static bags for protecting um, chips and MOSFETs and things like that, like do these actually work? And do they generate charges when you rub them together? That's kind of cool. Um, but other than that, it's kind of just a curiosity. One idea I had was to take one of these uh, a laser rangefinder. Like I have these little modules here, which this comes out of one of these. And it can measure um, distances to within a couple millimeters. And I thought it would be really cool if I took this guy and stuck it in here somehow and connected it up so that I could actually measure the distance between the sensing electrode and the charge object 
and then calculate the actual surface voltage. Then I could read it out like literally in kilovolts uh, right on the display, which would be pretty cool. I mean, it would be, you know, more or less accurate, but it would be more accurate than just kind of guessing as, as I have to do now. So tell me what you think in the comments below. Tell me what you think I should do with this thing next. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Like and subscribe.